Hello, my name is Patrick Moore. And I'm Marlisa McLaughlin. And welcome to Health Buzz. Perspectives on natural healing. Have you ever sat down and asked your partner, what does love mean to you? Have you ever asked yourself for that matter? And do some of your ideas come from assumptions you don't even realize that you've had before? Maybe ideas that came to you that you absorbed just through your television screen or hearing a conversation or, or even just dreams you might have had. So how realistic is your idea and your ideology about relationships and what love is for you? And here's a good question. Does your relationship affect your health and can relationships bring you to optimum health or far from optimum health? So it's an interesting thing we'd like to look at tonight, Patrick. Well, Mar Marlisa, I mean, we're delighted to have one of America's finest educators to <laughs> explore some of these issues. And I'd like to introduce Kathleen O'Reilly. I love your name, by the way, O'Reilly. And she's been teaching, she's been an educator for almost 15 years at the University of Connecticut and other educational institutions with a master's degree in sociology. And some of the areas that she's been teaching as with her students are gender and sexuality studies. She's taught sociology of sexuality, sociology of gender, women's studies, women and violence, and all kinds of you know, areas that she's explored in terms of relationships. And as a health practitioner, I'd just like to say before we you know, go into this topic, uh, I've dealt with almost every illness and disease on earth. You know, and it's been my experience, you can put the best food plan together, you can put the best diet plan, supplements, nutrients, vitamins, exercise programs, but if someone does not have that inner wellness of emotional stability, relationship-wise, family-wise, whatever it is, I mean, to me, that is the most important aspect of health. Mm. That is the most greatest vitamin pill to have that emotional wellness. And unless you have that emotional wellness and stability, you can never reach optimal health. Mm. And so we're going to be exploring some of these issues from a relationship standpoint. And uh, welcome, Kathleen. Welcome, Thank Kathleen. You. Thanks. It's great to be here. How do you feel about that? Uh, I know, couldn't that, agree more. You know. I couldn't agree more that... Um, uh, the state of our relationships often reflects and has an impact on the state of our health. And I think it's really instructive to look at romantic relationships because it, often our romantic relationships are our most important relationships. So therefore, I think they have, they have the potential to have the greatest impact on our health. So, going back to Marlisa's question, have you ever asked your partner or yourself, what does love mean to you? As a sociologist, I look at the messages we get from our culture about what love is, what love is supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like, um, who is supposed to have it, how do you know when you have it, how do you know when you don't have it, and... Um, how do you know? How do I mean, you know? Well, we, we live have... in a very challenging time, you know, and cultural roles have changed so much mm -hmm. over the last 20, mm -hmm. 30, 40 mm -hmm. years. And, you know, sometimes guys don't know what to say or what to do or what right. is a, what's normal, what's not normal. And if or you go you, back to the, you know, the 40s and 50s, it was kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> I love Lucy. Uh -huh. I mean, all these shows uh -huh. you had, it was, you know, uh, Leave it to Beaver. And Everything was kind of set as to what the roles were, but it's... Yeah, That's such is, a great point because we don't have we don't have a blueprint yet no. for those changing roles. But I can tell you something we do have a blueprint for that really hasn't changed very much over time, and that's our ideology of intimacy or what romantic love should look like. Yeah. Now here's a question before you begin. Is there a difference between romantic love and intimacy? Like, how would you define ah, romantic love and intimacy? Ah, Aren't so you that's... curious? <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> so that's a great point. And um, I think if we look typically, people tend to equate romantic love with intimacy. Whereas, actually, there's many ways to be intimate. Many, many different relationships in our lives can be intimate. Although what we tend to do is I'm intimate in my romantic relationship and that's where intimacy comes from and that's what it is. And if I was going to define romance and, and love, I would probably, probably all of us would define it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. 
What I want to look at is how we are encouraged to define it, how we're encouraged to look at it in terms of societal messages. And media does play a huge, uh, huge role in how we perceive everything. So right, perspectives right. on natural health, perspectives on relationships, perspectives yeah. just mm -hmm, on its own. Mm -hmm. So getting the right lens to be able to view what you're trying to discuss with your partner is so important because language is just so broad. It, the spectrum on how one word can be interpreted with one person depending on their history, etc., mm -hmm. can really mm -hmm. be a game changer for a lot of different reasons. That's true. That's true. And I, I think when, when, we, when we use the word romance, though, there's a definite picture that comes up. There's a definite idea and or ideal. And I think there's four main elements to this romantic love. And the first element is the idea of the one true love. Oh. So with this, it, the love is, is unique. It's something that me and this one other person have. And it's, you know, I, I love this person. And they love me in this totally unique way that no one else ever had. And I never had with anyone. And there's just one right one, one right one for me. And out of like 8 billion people on the planet, there is that one <laughs> and only one. And um, that person is perfect for me and, and um, I'm perfect for them and it's perfect and there's just that, that one true person, one true love. Uh, that's, that's the first element. Is there any truth to that? Well, um, uh, all of this, when you take it together, it, it, it's a myth taken together. And when I say that, I don't mean to say that that can never happen. Because certainly, certainly there are people where there is just one, one love for them. And you really can feel lives. it. It just emanates. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to experience that. Well, when you talk about one true love, you know, with, and you mentioned 8 billion people in this world, yeah. I once heard a statistic that 90% of the human race marries someone within 20 mile radius. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. So, so yes. it's, there's a real geography to, uh -huh. to one, one true love, love right? Uh -huh. Just yep, yep. in your backyard. Yep, the, the filter theory of mate you know. selection. Geography is you know. one of the top ones. And then there's other, other ways we filter you know. that one true love down <laughs> to someone 20, within so 20 miles. If we miles. moved to another state, there'd be one true love. Wow. Or another country, one true love, right? Yeah, Pot yeah. Potentially. It, truly, truly. Potentially. But then there's inner geography. Mm -hmm. Like your inner landscape really mm -hmm. defines how mm -hmm. rich the emotional soil, I feel, is for relationships in general. But when you're looking for a partnership, that's really important. And, oh, that's and there's, the, I think that's where assumptions come in. Like, how do you know that what you think you're feeling is something that is um, just an assumed feeling of yourself that you haven't even questioned yet? Why do I feel that way? Like, why, mm. why do I want this to represent my relationship? Because mm. you just take so much for granted. At least that's, that's the feeling mm -hmm, in the sense mm -hmm. I get as I've gone through mm -hmm. life, just having my own relationships and having relationships by witness and vicariously through friends who share. And I don't think we ever do that, really, ask why. Why do I think this is how it should look? It's often, it's not the, the way it should be, is what you can hear often. Do you hear mm -hmm, that? Like, mm -hmm. this is not the way it should be. It should be like this. And, but you don't ask, well, why do you think that? Yes, yes. So what yeah. are the components of a Well, the first thing? one is one true love. Right? The second one is love at first sight. So there's, love is this clear, decisive choice. And um, you either know it or you don't, and you know it right away. And if that doesn't happen, then obviously they're not your true love. See number one, where you have the one person out of eight billion that, <laughs> that, that is made for you. So um, the, the second piece of it is there's love at first sight. And it's clear, and it's decisive, and you know immediately. And it's, it's, um, it's a revelation. It's kind of like the golden ring on the carousel. Ooh, you know? yeah, yeah. I never got that ring. Well, I don't mean it <laughs> for my relationships, but I'm just thinking You're about the carousel. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't need to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't and, and, like and again, that. I'm not saying, like I've, definitely, I've definitely met people, I've had students who are like, oh, my parents met, um, and two months later they were married, they fell in love at first sight, they're, two months later they were married, they've been married 50 years, they're happy. I'm not saying this can never happen. But I'm saying that um, it typically isn't what happens, although we do set ourselves up to believe that this is how it should happen. 
So one true love, love at first sight. Then the third piece of this is love conquers all. So here we have the idea that, that love will prevail over all obstacles, um, um, anything, any problems we have, all, all we need is to love a little harder and it's gonna, everything will be smooth sailing from then on so that it's the answer to our problems. Um, we also tend to frame love as, as a, uh, a means of salvation. So if, if I love you enough, you're going to be perfect. Um, if you love me enough, I can be perfect. Uh, this, this isn't always the case, <laughs> as you might have found through, throughout life. So that's, that's a third piece of the, the romantic love myth. And the fourth piece is happily ever after. And we've all, we've all seen the happily ever after. You've even heard the fairy tales. That's how they end, happily ever after. And they don't go into anything more. So, so with ha happily ever after, it's, it's love sets you up for life. You fall in love. It will endure till the end of time. And we also tend to think if, if it doesn't endure, then it couldn't have really been love. And... Um, I think we sell ourselves and our relationships short when we think that. And that can greatly affect health ah. because your whole body just kind of depreciates in life value mm. when you're feeling something like that, when, when mm -hmm. what you thought was the reason why you were motivated to do something that's not, mm -hmm. and you're left standing on your own, mm -hmm. and the assumptions have washed back out to sea. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So how can, how can people out there maybe take a look at their relationships? And I'm sure it's going to take a lot of courage mm -hmm. and a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. to even bother. Like, why bother? Everything's working right now. I mean, I get my mm -hmm. dinner on the table. Or, and I'm totally minimizing this. But, you know, within your own framework, how do you know? Mm -hmm. How do you know what you are feeling? Are they assumed feelings and you're counting on that to bring you to the next day or the next decade or the next yeah. end until the end of your life with your partner. Yeah, so when when our um, when our real life doesn't match up to the myth, that's when when there can be issues, right? That's when we may have stress or disappointment, anger, anxiety, depression, maybe even. And then that's where That's where you come in. Health Patrick. comes in, right? Absolutely. Uh unquestionably. Uh, one of my great mentors, Robert Crayon, one of the great nutritional scientists of America, after 20 years in the business of knowing every vitamin, every supplement, every diet plan, every food, every exercise, every detoxification, and he came to the conclusion that if you don't have a sense of self-love, and if you don't have that emotional stability or wellness, and often that comes within a relationship, a family situation, it's really hard to get well. Mm -hmm. You know, it just mm -hmm. really is, and it's just mm -hmm. so crucial to your health. And you see people develop all kinds of illnesses, different diseases, things of that nature, and they say, well, why? Maybe I didn't have a good diet. Maybe it was a vaccination. <laughs> Maybe it was something. They're not really sure, but quite often it can spring up from uh, just not having uh, that emotional stability. And so when we talk about relationships, I think you mentioned the word crucial or courage. What is courage? You know, how often do couples and sit down and talk and ask these questions and initiate that dialogue, you know, discuss? I think for men, it's a little bit harder, I find. And, you know, we talked about this before, what mm -hmm. is courage? You know, we think about men being the defender, you know, the family, strong, stoic, things like that. But uh, how often uh, could we look upon courage for a male species to actually sit down and initiate these intimate genuine conversations that are hard mm -hmm. to fit into an average day especially or the narrative of a male let's abso say. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. that that mm -hmm. and to find mm -hmm. the space for that narrative to breathe and to mm -hmm. organically arrive with your partner that's yeah. i mean that alone how do you where do you get the courage like how, yeah. how what can you do well and when we understand that our emotional states and the states of our relationships has everything to do with our health then, um, then it would be, I think, important for us to look at the ways in which the romantic love myth 
is um, not serving us well. So if we go back to one true love, what's the reality? The reality is that there are many loves and many ways to love. And that uh, we can love people in a variety of ways. And someone that we love at, at one phase or cycle in our life may not be the right person during another phase or cycle in our life. And, um, and even you can have feelings of love and attraction for more than one person at once. And to, if we do accept it and, and instead of saying, no, the romantic, <laughs> romantic love is like this, not like I'm being, because when we, when we beat ourselves up for, for our feelings um, or our attractions or desires, we're, we're <coughs> excuse me, we're not, um, you know, we're bringing on states of anxiety and, and depression, frustration, whatever and guilt. it might be. Guilt. Guilt, a primary right? oh, negative about feeling soul for eater. health. Yeah. Right? It is a soul eater. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Pac-Man uh -huh. that goes in uh -huh. and takes away all your joy if you're guilty. And, and to, mm -hmm. so are you suggesting then is it safe to, sit, uh, not to assume, but to interpret that by having... Um, yourself be okay with what you're feeling. You don't necessarily, I'm not suggesting that you have to act on it, but the right. fact that you can feelings take a look at your okay. feelings and say, okay, mm -hmm. there they are. I'm not going to mm -hmm. feel guilty. I don't know why I've arrived at this feeling, mm -hmm. but by not feeling guilty, then you can move through that. Right. Don't hold yourself to the standard of the romantic love myth. Understand that there's many loves and many ways to love. Love at first sight. Understand that love grows. It may, it doesn't necessarily require a dramatic choice. Um, it's often ambivalent and confused. It can happen by circumstances or just by going along with what are, what's already happening. Um, understand that problems happen. Love doesn't conquer all. Love doesn't pay the rent, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it isn't the answer to being dissatisfied with your life. It isn't going to cure your destructive habits or patterns. Uh, this is important to understand. Also, there's no guarantees. Um, Long-term love requires open, honest communication. It isn't, we fell in love, now we live happily ever after. There's compromise, there's change, and it's contingent on the, the satisfaction of both partners. So what I think is a, a good idea in terms of your health and your relationships, especially romantic relationships, is, is look at how you define love. What does love mean to you? Are you going along with the romantic love myth and applying that to your real love relationship? Because it may not be a good fit. <laughs> right, and if it's not, then you can take the time mm. and find ways to explore how to deal with that, I think, mm -hmm. in our physiology, because our bodies are gonna be emitting and all kinds of things are happening. You know, your hormones are going crazy at certain different points of your life. I'm just thinking mm -hmm. about when we're teenagers mm. and, and what we view love as then mm. and how at 16 you can feel like this is it. I've, right, right. I've completely found it and mm -hmm. you're 16. Yes, but I think that it is love. <laughs> and and it a lot is. of us think, oh, no, that's just puppy love. You're not really in love. No, that is love. And you're, you know, then there'll be other loves or not. Maybe you'll be one of those... 50-year people that go on and fall in love in high school and stay in love forever. And work through all the things mm -hmm. that come up in a, the mm -hmm. more realistic version of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And yes. make those choices to stay committed and so take care. So sit down. Ask yourself, what does love mean to me? Ask your partner, what does love mean to you? And see where, <laughs> where there's overlaps and where there's gaps. So you would suggest uh, initiating this a dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, a conversation. Mm -hmm. And what kind of, can you give us some suggestions to open that dialogue or to give courage or to give mm. how, you know, what kind of questions would you ask or when you're talking about intimacy and romance and love and optimal relationships and stability and wellness? I mean, what if people are shy about communicating or they kind of take things for granted? Is there any advice you, you know, a question, an opening line, or anything like that? Or is it just sit down and have the courage to? Yeah, take a deep breath. Oh. Or a shot of take tequila. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> we had that one because, you know, I think it has to, I think environment plays a lot 
uh, has a huge part in when conversations like that can open. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you might want to do is just plan for a quiet time with your partner. Because mm -hmm. I know in my life there are no quiet times unless I, <laughs> you know, shut the door and say that's it. Like we were yeah. trying to talk with you guys last night even just, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, a closed door with an office. So planning a time that's right or getting up. What, what are the two, what are your two most compatible places to be and decide which one might work better? Like do you like to be indoors mm -hmm. or outdoors? And mm -hmm. when you're outdoors, what do you enjoy doing? Is, are you sitting? Are you moving? Do you like to have food? Do you, you know, building up a place, creating a space. Safe space. A right. sa very safe space. Like people might not feel comfortable going out to a restaurant and saying, What does love mean? What to is you? it? What does it mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me another shot of that tequila. <laughs> so you want to create that space. That's mm -hmm. what I would suggest yeah. to first safe and foremost. Safe space. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there are different love languages. I mean, there are ways, di different ways that your partner may show and you don't realize, like um, somebody doing the chore for you might actually be a really profound way because the whole time your partner might be out there mowing the lawn, they're thinking, oh, I just can't wait to see her or his face when it's done and they come home and there's that chore that's not there mm -hmm. and look how pretty it is and we've honored our home and we're giving reverence to what we have built together. I think that's a way I know that just recently I hadn't considered until someone pointed out, hey, how nice of your husband. Look what he just mm -hmm. did for you. That's a beautiful way to show mm. how he loves you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't take it in that deeply and realize it then until it it's was... It's appreciating and not taking things for granted. Right, that, because there's such a there are a ways long, of communicating that are not non-verbally. Right, the non But I might also add yeah. that mowing the lawn is not part of the romantic love myth. No, it's not. So to you, it may not look like Bought love, into right? <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, right? Where's so that So understand, <laughs> understand where in your relationship you're applying the standards of the myth rather than the reality. So where does uh, cleaning up the kitchen or the bathrooms or the uh, <laughs> doing the dishes come? I mean, that that's my kind of romance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, look what I bought you. Yeah. Some of those gloves. There's a new <laughs> apron. <laughs> right? There's some yeah. new cleansers. <laughs> that could do it for somebody yeah. so, uh, on mm -hmm. a certain day. Mm -hmm. It might be the, it yeah. might actually. You mean, you mean if, uh, if your husband came home and said, I, honey, I bought you a new mop? Uh, I, that's happened to me. Oh, it has? I've been thrilled. <laughs> I, I felt very honored. It means yeah. a lot to, to make things easier, to be mm -hmm. considered, to mm -hmm. actually ha to have been thought of in so many more ways than just as a way of service to another human being. So there's an exchange. So maybe that's, that's part of it too, is to recognize that there has to be a nice intermingling of needs, desires, wants, mm -hmm. uh, a place to express fear I think is huge. Because sometimes we don't even realize we're afraid of certain things. So because mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're at the back of our minds and they're bothering us. And I don't necessarily mean, oh, oh I'm afraid. I just mean sort of the, the things you're afraid of, like are we going to make ends meet this month? Are we going to be able to do this or that or the other thing? That are the, whatever the vehicle is that we've mm -hmm. chosen together mm -hmm. to get from one point to another, it's really valuable yeah. to yeah. create that space to find out is there fear involved? Mm. Can it be overridden? Is, mm -hmm. it, is the fear causing problems in how we're communicating. Is, are the assumptions causing the fears? And, and there's the assumption. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back to that, doesn't it? I do. Yeah. Assumptions. <laughs> so take a good look, if you can tonight, at any point in time or whenever you're watching this video, about what, what kind of assumptions have you made or did you re didn't even recognize that you had made until this conversation. Hopefully, we've really hoped to inspire you and to give you courage to face up to some things that you might not even have realized you needed to take a look at. Things that will create an interesting and loving dynamic, uh, an expanding dynamic for you so your health and your vitality just increases. Places to go with that. Any, any thoughts yeah, well, just you? Kathleen, thank you very much. Uh, oh, thank for, you. It's been so awesome. I I, I've fun. learned so much. Just <laughs> sharing your ideas and, uh, you know, the, there's so many things we take for granted. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I come back again to, you know, the importance and the, of the aspects of what is a good relationship and how we can initiate that dialogue and help people to ask those questions, mm -hmm. pursue those questions, because it's, 
it's the ultimate in terms of your own health and your life potential to have that, you know, communications and to, to know how to do it. Absolutely. And to have the courage, have the courage to, you know, ask these questions and explore and uh, optimize. And I think much, many of us are afraid to do that and we take a lot for granted. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you for helping us to, you know, explore that issue. Would you You're like welcome. to wrap it up or? You know? I think that was a good wrap. So ask yourself before you go to bed tonight or ask your partner, what does love mean to you or to me? Because <laughs> you might not have a partner. So whatever it is, whoever you're asking, maybe even your cat. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us tonight on Health Buzz. Thank you. Good job.